All right, everybody, I can't do streaming. Uh, my internet's not allowing it, especially with Star Citizen. Um, so instead, I'm just going to make a video and post it and uh, go with that, because I really want you guys to see what Star Citizen is like, uh, if it's something you're interested in. Uh, what I've got pulled up right here is just kind of a trade sheet. Um, not entirely accurate right now. Uh, I need to update this, but these are relatively accurate um, for price data. Um, what's happening right now, so I am going to be trading Laranite. Um, I bought some at Kudre Ore for 33. Uh, that was the price today. thought I could sell it at Port Olisar for 70% of 93. Well, I can't. It's uh, It sells for 28 at Port Olisar, so I am in a losing investment right now. And I am just going to fly to a different port called Levski and see what we can do. So I figured I would start recording and take you guys along for the ride. Um, for those of you who haven't seen Star Citizen before, this is what the game is looking right now. I've got got it on medium graphics. Um, and actually, I can probably bump that up real quick. Not that it's going to make that much of a difference, but um, server pop is pretty low right now and not a lot going on, so I could probably get away with it. So... Really beautiful game, to be honest. Uh, we've got some NPCs standing around. Uh, I'm just taking the time to walk back to my ship. Um, I've got some nice armor on here, and I can't... I don't know how to get the, the free camera to work and, um, on foot, sadly. But, yeah, I've got a railgun and a custodian SMG on my back right now. So... But this is Port Olisar. Um, I guess before I leave, I can give you guys a quick tour. Where I just left, across the way here, that's the, um, I guess you could call it customs. Uh, you can go there to make trades and stuff like that. Uh, these are the ship terminals. You can go up to these and interact to pull out your ship. Um, upstairs is the quote-unquote living quarters. It's where you spawn in uh, when you're joining into the game. Um, I'm going to walk through this door here. So there's a few shops. Uh, there's some that I'm probably not going to show you here, but I'll show you these two real quick. Um, I can run or jog and sprint, but I'm walking because I need to keep my vitals in check and because it's just better for immersion. So this right here is the armor shop. This does not have the armor that I am currently wearing. Here's the NPC. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard that, but he just said, hi, thanks for coming in. The NPCs actually do have some form of interaction. Uh, but this is where you can come to buy all kinds of different spacesuits, all kinds of different armor, that kind of stuff. Um, really nice how they have the shop set up where everything that you can buy is out and displayed, and it's almost like walking into a real store. That's uh, really good for immersion. Um, man, my, uh, my vitals are going up even though I'm just walking. That's odd. Uh, one thing to keep in mind... This is still technically pre-alpha gameplay, um, so it's not, you can't take this as what the game is going to be, this is just what the game is right now. Um, so, might experience some bugs while I'm playing here, uh, like my vitals going up even though I'm walking, but it's what it is what it is. Um, maybe what I can do, I'm going to pull this up anyway, so... Uh, this is your MOBA glass. Um, you access it by hitting F1. It's a little bright. That's something that they need to tone down because you can't see all the buttons down here. Uh, but I get a, I've got a general idea of where everything is, so it's not a big deal. Um, you can go through several things. Uh, this button here will take you to your journal, so that you can, or contract manager, sorry, so that you can um, look at the missions that are available. Uh, this, when you're at a fueling station. Gives you the opportunity to refuel, restock, and repair. Uh, this is. Oh, yeah, that's uh, ship modification stuff. Um, journal entries. Some of these buttons don't work. This is your star map. This is how you set waypoints and things like that to travel to. Uh, this is the current system that is playable. It is the Crusader system. Um, and it's in the Stanton star system. So. Uh, right now you can visit, you can't visit Crusader itself, uh, There's no. I think they're going to put in cities uh, in the clouds of Crusader eventually, but right now you've got Port Olisar, which is where we are, uh, there's the refuel station, you've got a few comma rays, and Selen, which is one of the moons, Damar, Yella, 
and all the way out here is Delamar. So these three in here are moons. And yes, you can land on all three of them. Uh, they are the actual moons of Crusader. Uh, they have different waypoints that you can go to on them to um, buy stuff or do whatever. They also have points of interest like crash ships and Yellow's got a drug lab that you can go visit if somebody has the mission and make a lot of money. Um, Yellow also has a place called the Grim Hex, which is the pirate spawn for if you become a pirate player. Delamar is acting as a Moon of Crusader at the moment. Uh, when the game actually releases, it's not going to be a Crusader object. Uh, it's actually going to be a asteroid flying through space, a very large asteroid, because it is uh, large enough that it, gravity is pulling it into a spherical shape. Um, but it's going to be floating through space, and it's going to be for the free peoples. Um, eventually you'll be able to visit Hurston and... Where is it at? Artcorp as well. Artcorp is a city planet, kind of like Corazon. But yeah, that's the general idea of the uh, star map there. And let's go back here. Um, what I wanted to open up, so there's your contacts. This is vehicle loadout stuff. And then Oop, that exited me out of my movie class, didn't it? All right, let's pull it back up. Uh, what I wanted to go to was this, and I'm going to unequip my railgun and see if that helps with my uh, vitals at all. Maybe the railgun is a little bugged. Um, here's what my dude looks like. Uh, it's got that color yellow on it, of course, but that's the basic idea. And we'll go ahead and we'll just unequip. Save changes. Did that not work? Did not. Okay. So we'll switch to the custodian rifle here. Or not custodian, the arrowhead sniper. So that way um, we're not killing ourselves here. Uh, we're going to get an extra rifle battery there. Save changes and equip. And now you'll see when I go into third person, I've got a different weapon on my back. So um, let's see if that helps with my stamina at all. But here's the weapon shop, um, what I was walking towards. So you've got a bunch of ammunition stuff in here. She said, hi, thanks for coming in. Uh, lots of ammunition down here to purchase. Uh, these are your uh, medical pins and your oxygen pins. Uh, so if you look down in the bottom left, I've got my vitals and then my tank and suit. That's the oxygen levels in my tank and my suit. Um, and also I've got uh, the little body that's on the left side uh, that shows damage to me and everything. The medical pins will heal just about anything and the oxygen pins will give you a boost of oxygen in your system. Uh, so that you don't die in space. But all the weapons that you can purchase are on the gun racks here, and yes, you do actually come up and look at these weapons. Um, to interact with anything, you hold F, and you can click, and you actually go into a buy menu off of the wall, which is um, pretty cool. Um, being a little buggy right now. But it actually pulls up a buy, buy menu and uh, allows you to purchase it that way. So... Really cool how that works. Um, I've always really liked that. That it's not just a go to a shop and you get a list and you can tell, oh yeah, this is definitely a video game. It's You walk into the shop and the stuff you can buy is out and about and you can purchase it right off the wall or off the hanger in case of the clothing store that's in here. But this is the airlock. As you can see, it says pressurized right now, which means it's matching station pressure. So I can come in. And here is the cycling panel right here. And the cycling panel, and you're going to see it says cycling, and that's going to depressurize. All of the sounds going to go away uh, because you're entering into the vacuum of space. It's depressurized now, and all of the screens, including the one inside, will say that depressurized. Really cool how that stuff works. And then we're going up to the landing pads. Um, I'm going to speed up my walk to something a little bit more brisk here. Uh, 
Did we go up? There's all kinds of different sizes of landing pads, and there's also multiple landing pads. Uh, it's zero zero through ten, uh, so technically there's I guess eleven landing pads, um, and then there's four struts. So like there's another strut over that way uh, that also has another eleven landing pads. So for the size that the servers are right now, uh, it's got room for pretty much everybody. Um, you see another ship docked over there. And then I am flying this bad boy, the Cutlass Black. Really pretty ship. Love it to death. Um, not my favorite ship, but I do like it. Uh, right now, this is, I, th I think, one of the subscriber ships or something, because I didn't actually buy it. I bought an Aurora, but because I'm a subscriber, I get to try out different ships at different times. Um, for those of you who have purchased ships, no, this is not a ripoff. You get your ship when the game starts. When the game starts, my subscription status means nothing. I don't get to keep any of the ships that I uh, quote-unquote rent through the subscription packages. So this is my Cutlass Black for now. Um, there's the Laranite in there that I'm going to fly around with and see if I can sell elsewhere for at least a little bit better. Uh, maybe break even, if not make a profit. But uh, that was the rear door that you just saw. We've got six seats back here for uh, transporting people. And then I've got these side doors that I can open up. Um, probably going to be for like docking and space exploration and things of that nature. Kind of cool. Got to find them. Okay. Close it. And you do interact with the panels to open and close the doors. There's another one over here that does the exact same thing. Uh, these cargoes are held down by the mag strips and everything that are on the ground, which is pretty cool. Come over here. This door opens. Here is the crew compartment. It's got beds. You can actually log out in these beds. If I lay down on one real quick, I'll show you. I'm not actually going to log out, but um, if I hold F, it's got log out and exit. Exit means exit the bed. Log out means log out of the game. And if you log out through a bed, um, you will actually log into that same bed so long as you come back into the same instance. Uh, instancing is an issue because there's different servers right now. Like I said, this is pre-alpha. But eventually, instancing will not be an issue. It will be one continuous server. Um, there's a turret in here. Okay, I'll go ahead and hop in this thing. Chair drops down and there's a door up top that opens up. It's going to close down beneath us there. Animation's a little bit off, but uh, it recenters itself. You can power this on. And boom, you've got a turret. I can't shoot because I'm in a, a, a weapons lock zone, but yeah, this, this turret can Assist in combat. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and exit using left alt plus F. So we've got gun racks over here. These are supposedly working now. Don't really want to test it. Um, I just don't feel like it right now. And then uh, there's a lot of panels and stuff. Eventually uh, engineering is going to be a pretty big thing in the game, so that's something to look forward to. And we've got up here a co-pilot seat and a pilot seat. Um, I really like the way that multi-role or multi-person ships work in this game. Um, interrupt here. So I'll get back to what I was saying in a minute. Uh, this is the ship. I'm going to go ahead and full power off just to show you guys what it looks like dead. Um, there's a couple ways to start up. You can hit 8, which is basically the hot key for the flight ready button here. It's got to power on and start up your engines. Um, or you can just hit power on. It's going to throw on your power. And then you can hit engines on. And that'll turn your engines on. Uh, you can also open all exterior doors and unlock your ship from the seat here. I'm going to go ahead and take off so my ship doesn't get forced despawned or stored, quote unquote. Hit in to raise the landing gear. And boom, we are in the air. So, crazy control schemes. Uh, space is to go straight up. Control is to go straight down. W and S control your throttle. A and D are pretty much strafing. Uh, your mouse controls all of your pitch and yaw. And then E and Q are controlling your roll. 
And uh, something to keep in mind, I'm using the advanced controls, so when you log in, these aren't the basic controls that you're going to be using, but uh, if you do get this game, you do log in, you want to use the advanced controls, let me know, I'll hook you up with how to do that. Um, I'm going to pull this up here so I can show you guys some things. This is the throttle right here. You'll notice I'm going to hit W, and that goes up to 14, and I can throw it all the way up to 100, and you'll see my speed indication right here is going up. Max speed is 220. I can hold shift to throw on afterburners, and the speed will continue. I can go up to 1,113 meters a second. I'm going to dial back the throttle to stop again. Up here is what's known as your hydrogen fuel. This is your basic, basic fuel for uh, basic movement. Uh, down here is quantum fuel. I have 575. This is what's used for your quantum jumping or warping. Um, a couple, like coupled mode, G-safe, ComStab, that kind of stuff. Um, it's more advanced stuff that I could go over another time. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll leave that be. Um, coupled is the, coupled and G-safe are the two that I think you're going to want, want to work with the most, but we'll, like I said, we'll go over that later. Um, multiple different panels here, and all of these are interactable. Um, right now we've got our comms pulled up, we've got power grid pulled up, um, heat, heat management pulled up, this is our radar, uh, we've got shields, shield management pulled up, weapons management pulled up, and then here's power again, and uh, we can actually probably switch that to something else if we wanted to. Um, but yeah, all of these screens can be any of these options here, like you'll see I can hit menu, I've got energy, comms, heat, weapons, and shields, uh, we'll keep that on energy for now. But uh, the energy is cool. You can me actually mess with this, set it up in multiple different configurations. Uh, we've got weapons on this side, um, engines on this side, and shields up here. Um, so you can defer power to different systems to uh, boost their potential. Um, got into a firefight with one of my with uh, a couple of my buddies in a ship the other day, and uh, one of them was running co-pilot, and he was able to. We, it was like a three-on-one or something like that, and he was able to throw power to shields for me as I was dogfighting and um, helped to keep us alive, helped to keep our shields strong and regenerate faster and everything. And then um, when we got down to the last guy and I knew that I wasn't going to have to worry about shielding as much, um, I was able to tell him to throw full power to weapons so we could finish off that last guy a little bit faster, and he was able to do that for me. Uh, that's the really cool thing about having a co-pilot is they have access to all these screens and they can do all this interaction for you while you're focusing on flying. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit about power management. You've got stealth up here as well. Uh, if I hit that button, it's going to drop my power usage to a certain level that's going to make me harder to detect. Kind of cool. Um, don't need it right now though. And then you've got down here, this is your heat management. Uh, you can suppress certain systems to get, take your heat down uh, so that it's also harder to detect you. Uh, comms, you can't open comms with other players yet, but this is still used because in order to land at certain stations, which you'll see this when we go into Levski, you actually have to communicate with the air traffic control in that area uh, to request a landing. And in Levski, you actually have to request takeoff as well, and you'll see why. Uh, this is your shield management, just like power grid management. You can take this section in the middle here and drag it to wherever you want. You can have full forward shields, full rear shields, uh, full rear right, like just all kinds of different configurations of shields there. Um, you can change like usage levels and stuff like that um, to help with power, but you usually want to have your shields at full, especially if you're in combat. Um, see you throw your shields on standby and stuff like that it's a lot to work with uh, you've got your weapons management down here in the bottom right so this is the entire system um, these are your weapons groups so I've got two weapons groups uh, I can't remember what they're grouped to right now I can check that real quick so okay these two are weapons group two these two are rep weapons group one I can either shut off Reference Group 1 or Reference Group 2 or both. I've also got 24 missiles to use, and I can turn those on or off as well. Uh, I can turn individual guns off here, and I can turn, I can mess with my missiles here and mess with priority and things of that nature if I have different types of missiles. So this is where you would switch between those. Um, here's some more power management stuff. Not much to go into there, to be honest. Um, not much to worry about. 
But yeah, that's just a little rundown of how the panels work. And like I said, your co-pilot will have access to all of these. Uh, makes things like the Constellation, which has two co-pilots with it, very, very interesting because you can have people multitasking for you and just really increase the effectiveness of your ship in, uh, in combat or multiple situations. So now that I've got all that out of the way, I'm going to hit F2, and it messed up. I'm going to open up the uh, star map here, and you can only travel in Crusader systems, so we're going to zoom in there, and we're going to go all the way out to Delamar. So the way that we do that, in order for it to show up on our HUD, we have to click it and set it as the destination. Um, exit out of that map. So you'll see in the top, this green arrow up here, that's showing me where my destination is at. It'll also show you where objects are in space that are just kind of there. But So as you'll see, it gave me an object in space to go towards. That's Delamar right there. So I'm going to hold B, and that's going to activate my quantum drive. That's going to jump me to Delamar. This is what quantum jumping looks like. Really cool animations. You go into third person and see how cool it really is. Um, got the particles all bouncing off the ship's shields and stuff like that. Really neat. This, uh, this game is definitely full of wallpaper opportunities. I've actually got a Star Citizen wallpaper right now that is a photo that I took flying a constellation over one of the moons here. So this is Delamar. This is the one that I was saying was going to be an asteroid going through space. As I said, very round, large enough that gravity started to pull it together, and kind of an odd asteroid, to be honest. Um, where we're going is Levski, that section that's labeled right there. So we're going to have to warp around the planet here. Uh, 202 should be around the other side. Um, but you've got these OM points. <laughs> You've got these OM points, and uh, these only show up if you have the planet selected as your destination, but they're very useful. They are orbital markers. Uh, what these do is they allow you to jump around the planet without having to just take long flights, so you can actually jump to these points uh, legitimately. Um, we're going to go to OM5. That's actually really good that we can hit that from here. That is the closest point to Levski, and you'll notice that all of these arrows are showing up on my screen to show me all of the different locations that I can go to. But we're going to OM5. One thing that's really cool, all of these moons and the planets, when they you know become a huge thing as well, they all have their own rotation, and uh, they all actually orbit their parent star. So uh, there's real mechanics here, and uh, if I were to shut the engines off right now, I'd actually be orbiting this moon. Um, so real physics and things like that. Uh, really, really cool to know that they're doing things like this. Uh, we're going to be on the day side of the planet for now. Lots of asteroids to dodge in between uh, while we're here. So I'm going to point my nose in the general direction of Levski, and then I'm going to hit shift to engage my afterburner, or uh, in this case enter like a cruise mode. We're going to go all the way up to 1113. Something cool about hydrogen fuel, certain ships have hydrogen scoops on them. So as we're flying here, um, that 98 could actually become 100% uh, again uh, on my hydrogen fuel that I pointed out earlier. So just something to keep an eye on. Um, in the top left of the screen, you'll see a basic blueprint layout of my ship, uh, those four green objects around it are um, my shields. Looks like we're going to come into Levski a little bit too fast to gain any fuel here, but I'm going to go ahead and start slow because we're getting really close. 30 kilometers is a lot closer than you would think it would be. And it takes a little bit of time to slow down, but... So I should be able to zoom in here and you should start being able to see Levski You've got four docking bays here. One, two, three, and then four is kind of hidden down there. Um, I'm going to try to get close to them so you can see. I can probably try to guess which one it's going to put me in, but I'm not going to risk it. 
Um, I'm just going to give a view of all of them so you guys can see what, what goes on here. So 15 kilometers away, and we've entered the atmosphere, so that's why we can't jump to objects like that. You cannot warp through the atmosphere. Looks like we've got some friendly targets here. That's what those are. That's other ships showing up on my HUD. So the city actually expands out quite a bit. Um, lots of mining going on here. But the habitable area is all inside uh, this little crater here that's coming up. And you'll see in the bottom left that big X going across that screen. It's going to change soon. Going to slow up here again. Boom. Levski Landing Control. That's what that says. So we're going to come in nice and easy here. I'm going to go ahead and look over and start comms with Lev Levski Landing Control. So normally there's a guy that'll come up and talk to you and stuff, but uh, looks like that's not operating currently. The one on the far left just opened up. You can see the doors. So that's where we're headed. And if you don't watch the doors open, if you need to know where you land, hit in, drop your landing gear down, and you'll see here in a second that green arrow with the green beam coming down. Uh, it'll become more apparent as we get closer. That's showing me where my landing request has been approved for. If you do not land in the approved area, you will get, um, I guess, an outlaw score, I guess you could say. Um, start becoming a pirate. So you have to follow the procedures. So here's that green arrow with the beam showing me where I need to land. Stop here. I'm going to hit auto land. This is, auto land is something that you can use at the ports when you have a designated landing area. The computer will recognize that. All you do is hold down in and it'll land itself for you. You can watch this come in. Boom. Doors are closing up above me. Really cool. All right. So now we're going to power off the ship here, or at least engine off. That's probably what I'll leave it as. Notice the ship dropped down. Um, thrusters aren't trying to hold it in the air anymore, so gravity completely took over. Hit Alt-F to leave the seat. We're going to go ahead and leave power on. Doesn't hurt anything, keeps the lights on, makes it easier to see everything. So, going to go out the same way we came in. Here's all of our Laranite again. Uh, we've got our ship locked, so nobody should be able to get in if they visit the hangar. Uh, one thing you need to remember is to close the doors behind us. So we're going to open up. And here is what the hangar looks like. This can actually fit some pretty large ships. Um, I've landed a Constellation in here before. I've landed a Retaliator Bomber in here before, which you guys may not have seen one of those before, but you'll see one in a future video, I'm sure, because... Uh, the group I play with, we love flying those things around. They are monstrous, and they use size 9 weapons, which is unheard of. They are capital ship killers. Use torpedoes that are proximity explosions instead of impact explosions. And I have one hit every single ship that I've thrown one of those torpedoes at. So, fun times. But uh, Levski is probably one of the coolest places to visit right now. Uh, First, because of the hangars that you have to land in, it just feels super futuristic and awesome. Um, second, well, you'll just have to wait and see. Uh, we're going to come up to this elevator here, to Customs and Habitation. As you can tell, this place is relatively run down, but that's what happens when you're working outside of government operations, right? So we're calling the elevator. Hopefully it's not bugged. Sometimes the elevator in Hangar 1 gets bugged. Oh, I hear it. Awesome. Doors open. And we hop in. Here's the elevator going down to customs. So we're going to hit two customs. I don't know how loud the game is right now, but uh, you can hear the elevator moving. And please feel free to comment on this video. Let me know what sound quality is like, what I need to change, things of that nature. Um, anyways, here is the customs area. This is where you're going to pull out your ships right here, um, all that stuff. Uh, 
the elevators to the four hangers, you've got one, two, three, and four. So those are the only four hangers at Levski currently. Uh, these go up to the top lobby airlocks. Uh, you can pull ground vehicles up there, and you can actually land your ships up there and pull your ground vehicles into your ship. This is the customs area. Uh, doesn't do anything currently that I know of, but I'm sure it'll do something eventually. It's got guys behind the desk, kind of cool. You walk through. Um, lots of stuff to see here. Um, to explore Levski fully will take another video in and of itself. This place is huge. Uh, but this up here, you've got your admin office, and to the right of that is all of your trading terminals. So we're going to open one up. Got two options up here. At the top, we've got buy and sell, and we're looking to sell currently. Going to select our ship from the drop down. Look at that. We made it, boys. So obviously somebody's been trading Laranite from Levski to Port Olisar. So we're about to make out like bandits here. Um, we bought the Laranite for 33 each. We're going to sell it for 115 each. That is absolutely bonkers. So we're about to make another 79,000, almost 80,000. Uh, when I started today, I was sitting at 50,000 UEC. Uh, trading another material that I bought, I got up to 60. We're about to more than double our earnings right here on the Laranite. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there. Boom. Up to 140,000 AUEC. Really good stuff there. Um, later I'll come back here and update my list through all of this. Um, Man, if Laranite is selling for that, yeah, 149, that's that's pretty high. The highest I've ever seen Laranite sell for was th uh, 93, and it sells it usually sells for around 30 something at Levski. So that is quite a thing there. Um, something to keep in mind. But all kinds of other material that you can trade as well. Come back to this later. So one thing I do want to show you guys in this video real quick, uh, just before I quit. Mission complete. You know, we did end up selling our Laranite for crazy profit, more profit than I expected. Honestly, I would have been happy to break even. So we made out like bandits there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call one of these elevators. This is going to take you down to the Grand Barter. Now, there's a lot more of Levski to see, but the Grand Barter is probably one of the cooler areas uh, to look at. And uh, while we're going down the elevator, we'll look down into this man made crater as well, this, this shaft. Here's the elevator. Gonna hop in here. And we're going to go down to the Grand Barter. So, you can actually fly a ship in here. Not recommended. Uh, sometimes you can get stuck. Not fun. Um, I don't know of anything, any type of rail actually being able to take you down this yet. I don't know what their plans are for Levski, to be honest. Uh, but it is just cool to sightsee, to be honest. Got other equipment on here, on the elevator with us. So here we go. We're down in the area of the Grand Barter. Got power control and stuff over there. As I said, these hallways would take quite a bit to explore uh, with you guys. So, or another video. Here is the Grand Barter. Real classy. I know. We're gonna go down one of these hallways and show you what it's about. This is probably gonna be one of the places to come to for you Han Solo-esque character types. Um, not exactly a pirate area, but it is relatively going to be a hive of scum and villainy, as Obi-Wan calls the uh, calls Mos Eisley. So, got the Grand Barter down here. Lots of stores to visit, clothing, plants, uh, food, that kind of stuff. Some of it's not purchasable yet, um, some of it is, so it's just one of those things you kind of have to explore. Over here is Conscientious Objects. This is actually your weapons store. Um, I'm going to go ahead and speed up to a jog here. It doesn't look like anybody else is around. It's not going to break anybody's immersion. So here this is. And this is a much bigger weapon store with much more selection 
than the uh, the one at Port Olisar. This is where you buy the rail guns um, and some shotguns and stuff like that, grenades, all kinds of crazy, crazy stuff. Um, haven't been able to find weapons attachments yet, sadly, so I don't have a scope for my rifle yet, but looks like it comes with one. It actually doesn't. Relatively saddening, but it is what it is. Um, lots of weapons choices here, though. I mean, you've got four different displays, I think. Yeah, four different displays that you can buy from. And he's got all of this ammunition up here up front. And again, he has the medical pins and the oxygen pins. So really, really, really cool stuff going on here at Levski. Um, there's definitely more shops. There's the armor shop. And uh, that's down here. Actually, first, I'm going to take you guys this way. You'll probably see all of this again in a future video, but Levski is the thing that you show people when you want to get them excited about where the game's going. So we've got a cantina down here. Really neat stuff. Walk down. There's your bartender. A couple people just kind of loitering. Uh, this guy you can actually interact with. Looking for somebody. He's eventually going to give you missions and stuff. Uh, you can come and doesn't look like you can sit in these booths yet, but you can sit in these chairs. So you can come in here with your buddies and sit at a table and chat and wait for other people to show up. Cool stuff. Lots of areas to do that. Eventually, I'm sure you're going to be able to buy drinks and things of the like, things of that nature. Um, you can sit in these benches up here and just kind of have a party. Whatever. Cool stuff. Probably going to be a a hot spot after your missions, after your cargo runs and such. So, one more thing we'll do. I'll go ahead and keep you guys with me for a little longer. We'll go downstairs and look at some stuff there, and then we're going to head back to the trade terminal. We're going to head back to Port Olisar anyway, so uh, we might as well buy some Corundum because I know that's a profitable trade going to Port Olisar. So, down here we've got a clothing shop, got some cool little outlaw-ish looking clothes, and a shop manager back there. This is going to be like a food area, come and buy food, um, drinks, you've got uh, greenery, and over here you've got tools and all the, the such, like lots of shops are going to be in this area, really neat stuff. Corduroy... Cordy, corderies, however you want to say that. Don't ask me. This is your armor shop in here. That not lit open sign, but I promise you it's open. So I have a mashup here. I've got all of the armor pieces for this, except for the head, and then I've got this... Oh! Backup program started running. Um, I've got this face mask. Um, that I'm wearing, so cool stuff. Um, different armor types at different stations that you go to. So this was really cool to me. So this is what I bought into. Got the shop owner back here, and uh, yeah, this is a short look at Levski. Long look to come. Oh my gosh, back up program opened up again. Should be the last time, at least for a while. So, right now, game, honestly, you're only going to pull 20 to 30 frames most of the time. Uh, they have not introduced range-based culling yet, to my knowledge, so this isn't something that you're going to pull 60 frames per second on, uh, no matter what kind of system you're running uh, at the moment. It will get there, though. They, they are in the works of updating the server and uh, updating the way things run. Uh, they released 3.0 because they wanted everybody to have a look at the progress the game has had so far. Um, you're going to hear a lot of people complaining about the game uh, because they probably dumped in a lot of money and wanted it done last year. Honestly, uh, with the production team that these guys have and with the bottlenecks that they've had in their production and things of that nature, these guys are doing fantastic uh, with what they have so far. And you also have to keep in mind... They're making a game that hasn't been done like this before. I mean, it's going to be a complete open, not just world, open universe um, role-playing game 
with spaceships that are multi-crewed and, you know, stations that you can land at and full-scale planets, and they're actually going to build the Earth system and just all kinds of crazy stuff that they're doing. And to get as far as they have, uh, after engine switching and all the other troubles that they faced, I mean, in my opinion, the game is amazing um, for the time that they've had. And hopefully, they're starting a quarterly release schedule, so hopefully that'll pick things up. Uh, they changed some things around in their production. So, fingers crossed. Don't quote me on it. Don't say, oh man, but Orkan slash Sniper said that, you know, it was going to go faster now. I'm saying, hopefully it will, but I'm not making any promises that it will, because I know better. But, uh,. Whatever you do, when you buy in, just don't spend thousands of dollars and don't get upset what, when uh, the game's not out in six months. Um, something to keep in mind, this is all pre-alpha. This isn't even alpha yet. Uh, people will tell you this is alpha. It's not. We are in a stage of the development that most people are lucky to even know is going on, to be honest. So... They're being very transparent. This is not vaporware. If it was vaporware, I would not be playing what I'm playing right now. Um, I've only I've only put I don't know 50 bucks into the game, 30 for the ship, and uh, 20 for a, a subscription for a couple months, and it's been nothing, um, nothing short of impressive so far. I forgot to go get more stuff. Oh my gosh. Hold up. You know what? Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and end the video here. Sorry, guys. Um, I do have to go back in anyway and record prices for the day. Um, but I'm sure you guys don't want to be around for that boring mumbo-jumbo. So, hope you've enjoyed this look at Star Citizen. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, if you need help with uh, discerning what packages might be good to buy, I can help with that as well. I'll tell you what's uh, flyable, what's not currently. Um, what might be a good ship for what you're wanting to do, what might be good to avoid um, if you're going to be a solo player or just have a few people on with you, and all those things of the like. Um, more videos to come, hopefully. But this has been Orcon or Sniperphobic, whichever one you know me by, and I will see you guys next time.